I'm in danger. Hello, my name is Gio. Today we're going to be... How many installments of this have we done? Is it our ninth, tenth guest? I think that's crazy, hey? I can't believe we've been doing this for almost two and a half months now. Before we start 32Q, make sure that when it comes to my team, you don't go there and intentionally trigger them. And if you do, and they tell me you do, I'm banning you immediately. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello, hello, hello. There we go. Amara, can you can you introduce yourself to the team for a little bit? Hi, everybody. Um, Meridarasaur. Um, I'm more nervous than I thought I would be for some reason. I don't know. I do lots of art streams and play way too much Genshin. I'm currently playing Unravel. Uh, Unravel. Which it's mostly just, isn't it amazing? Like a little bit, mm. I have to be like in the right headspace to like, <laughs> yeah, really think the through trauma. a problem like that. Like sometimes I'm like. How? But ideally, mostly chill stream. I, my goal is to like, be the person you fall asleep to, because you're Aww. getting good vibes, or because you're just like, it's so quiet and chill and like relaxed. Like I want you to be able to like get to a place where you're so comfortable. You're like, I could just sleep to this. That's so Less cute. sexy ASMR. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> And then, you know, sometimes I get way too into Genshin and I'm over here like artifact grinding for six solid hours on stream. So, Cheese. you know, that's... I also know you huh? run a podcast. So did you want to talk a little bit about that? So unfortunately, the podcast has ended, although if oh. anyone wants to do a podcast with me, I'm still kind of about it but i have i have slightly new direction the podcast is by the way still wonderful though it's called keep it curious podcast basically we would go through um lots of different topics actually all about like like anthropology spooky listener stories that was actually our final farewell was like a, basically just like one of my friends had some really great stories and another one had some interesting like my family knew about this like like weird anthropology moment um where basically i don't want to give it all away i suppose but I, i'm gonna give it all away anyways um when did you start your podcast oh sheesh that's a good question so we our last episode was in october of 21 oh i started in um sorry uh august 2020 so it made it about a year and we had a year something like that wow you know some small small amount didn't we used to have 31 32 we had 32 episodes um so, and 32 I mean, questions to fall in love let's go it's <laughs> oh what are my the God. odds was, you know it's <laughs> like actually though what the heck are the odds Especially because like there's one hiatus episode in the middle and I didn't even name the last one so I had to count that. I was gonna say 31 and I was like, no, there actually is a 32nd episode. I just didn't call it that for some reason because it was our last episode and it didn't really feel like there was a point in naming it. It was such a random number, but like today it's not a random number. Today mm. it mm. is the number. Mm. That That's what we love to hear. Let's go. We we love. That's what we love. <laughs> But yeah, so it was it was really, really wonderful while it lasted. But we would spend about like 40 hours a week just researching this because I had just lost Jeez. my job. And I filled that space with research for the podcast because I wanted to be as like accurate as I could be, as like close to the original. Because I was doing things that, like it's not like I knew about. I didn't go to school for any of these things. I just thought they were interesting and wanted to do my research. So like like looking into uh like hinduism dwarka which is like an atlantis sort of and treasure hunts and like i did do atlantis oh i got a little too deep into atlantis you guys know about reincarnation uh that was actually one of our most popular episodes uh with the reincarnation episode we did kind of two or three kind of about it um yeah. but found it really interesting and tried to be again as like you know trying to stay as close to like the original understanding yeah. as much as we could tell and from kind of presenting it like, as fact and then be maybe like reacting here and there and be like have you seen yeah. this okay yeah yeah, yeah 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 while still recognizing <laughs> that a lot of these things are like semi-conspiracies and it's like it's maybe not something that i know or believe necessarily mm. but i want to talk about it in a way like we did an entire episode ugh, tangents galore we did an entire episode on vampirism and people who truly believe they are vampires and like as like 
in like a way that we wanted to be as non-judgmental as possible and like in the opening arms vampire kind of like... hey, i think this was from the national post an atlanta native he is known as murticus both legally and personally even on his starbucks card and while he mostly dresses head to toe in black he doesn't don colored glasses or fang prosthetics an antique dealer by profession married with two dogs he is one of exceptionally few vampires to be open about his identity i hide in plain sight he explains for almost a decade, he has personally worked with academics, social scientists, psychologists, lawyers, law enforcement agencies, and others to best approach, research, and understand the vampire subculture. So, vampirism in the modern era. Murticus says that it's not a cult, a religion, a dangerous practice, a paraphilia, an offshoot of the BDSM community, or a community of disillusioned teenagers, and definitely not what's depicted in fictional books, movies, or television. Because I know that still sounds really weird when I haven't explained literally anything yet. I'm intrigued and confused already. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> like, so many of the ideas for these episodes started because I was like, I have a really dumb, weird question, because I like to ask really dumb, weird questions. That's and what then we're all I'll, about. Like, look it up, and then fall into these rabbit holes of, like, <sighs> intrigue. And I loved doing that, and I was like, why don't I write that down and i also want to talk to someone about it so we started this podcast so we could talk to each other about the little rabbit holes we fell down and it's meandering if you like meandering the same way that i obviously can't if you hang out for long enough you'll know how the podcast was would you like to be famous no um i definitely don't want to be famous honestly like i want I was actually kind of having a conversation a little bit more with my mom about this actually today mm -hmm. where like I kind of made a really big like unrelated to this dream but like perfectly timed which is nice because sometimes I can be kind of a bummer guys but I made like a really Same. big like decision kind of like two nights ago like I posted my first TikTok because of that where I was like I really just like I used to love making art so much and it became like such a toxic thing for a while and I want to get back to the days when it was really nice. So like I had this like wonderful like okay I'm gonna like connect my Twitch to my art but like also I don't really want to be like known per se. I just want to be able to like share my art with people and have them appreciate it and like you know if you don't appreciate it you don't have to be there and you don't have to support and that's totally fine. You know, but it's not like, if I could do it without ever being known, I would. And that was part of yeah. the reason that I got out of the art field was like, I didn't like having everything I did was like attached to like who I was as a person and mm. like whether or not like I was a like successful person or whether or not I was a failure or like if someone didn't like my art, it was like a personal affront. And I was, I loved the idea uh. of being like, semi-anonymous with it where it's like look this is all like merit erasor so like anything that is merit like i don't i don't mean it in like a like toxic sort of dissociative way just like in the like it it's freeing so like i posted yeah. my first tiktok and i was like screw it let's just do this like i'm here to make mistakes and learning and practicing and experiencing this with people but like not too many people <laughs> no I, it's like creating your own community right yeah yeah not like, not, not too many people and exactly and sometimes it's yeah. good to not be everyone's flavor you yeah know? exactly and i think for a long time like i've actually had people tell me that before that i'm a chameleon and i'm like mm. i don't i don't think they meant it in an offensive way but maybe i kind of took it that way where it's like i don't mean to just be like what everyone like in any situation like what somebody wants like it's like a very people pleasing kind of and i am a people pleaser mm. to a certain small extent but like i still feel like there's like a fine line where it's like i'm not trying to become anything i'm just trying to like keep everybody happy like i just want yeah. people to be happy and, and like and if they're not happy because i also feel like that's i don't mean that in a toxic positivity way just oh like yeah i'm getting mm. off yeah, but like you know what I mean it's like if you want to be sad let's be sad together let's talk it out let's like talk it through let's problem solve if you need to listen if you just need to like if you just need to rant I'm here for that but also you know I want it to be a place that everyone's feeling safe and comfortable like I don't know why anyone would want to like hang out with people that they don't feel safe with or comfortable with like I will say this though um mm -hmm. through like my years of just talking to people some people don't know what 
safe is. So they'll put Absolutely. themselves in situations and they're like, I think this person is safe because I've known them for quite some time. So I'll stay here. But then people so evolve. True. And so they don't mm -hmm. know. It's kind of like how you boil a frog, right? When you when you put a frog in hot boil, it jump out immediately. But if you put it in okay. cold water and slowly turn up the temperature, oh, poor frog. <laughs> it won't notice yeah. and it'll, it'll, it'll okay. die in into it. Don't get me wrong. I've had it Fuck for a long you. time, but like everybody on Twitch already knows I am like, I want to say even more than two thirds, but like math is hard for me. Let's just say Same. a lot of the time I am mostly a lurker. It's like I'm genuinely there and I'm listening along and maybe I'll wander away the spacey way that I am. But the same thing with TikTok. I'm a lurker. I just watch everything and I decided to finally post my very first thing. So it's not yeah. like this isn't like, <laughs> is like I've been posting for so long. I posted my first TikTok. I use a stream or Twitch kind of like I was in one way or another like a coping mechanism especially if my mind is kind of too busy with thought and i want to erase it i'll be lurking at people's streams i'm like uh-huh <laughs> uh-huh uh-huh like mm. genuinely that's uh, that's kind of why i listen to streams and the streams right. that i like orient mm -hmm. towards are the people that are just like having a genuine good time like i just like to hear like laughter and happiness in the background i don't have to know yeah. what it's about sometimes it's easier when i don't know what it's about because i don't have to form any opinions about it i can just listen to other people enjoying themselves and it relaxes me or just mm. like being chill and it relaxes me so like that's what i want to be out of a stream and that's mm. what i look for in a stream mm. so like wholesome streams <laughs> like i love wholesome streams where people just like talk about their interests and everybody supports each other and is like wow I love this about you and I love that about you and like everyone can just be like nice you know like let's just be nice just I literally have that on my profile like just trying to peacefully coexist <laughs> that's all I'm trying to do doing our best <laughs> eh? doing our best get through this. <laughs> Ugh. so that's, that's um, honestly like one of the main reasons I don't want to be famous and I feel like that's where we left off and oh my god I'm so sorry oh no Whoa. totally fine I, I uh, it's okay you know oh okay what event in your life made you change your perspective I want to say the most recent one, actually, which was making the decision to continue to be this way. Um, that was actually a really big decision. Can you expand on that? Yeah, yeah. I'm like trying to not force myself to speak too fast while I think it out in my head. Um, but Twitch has definitely put me in that position where I had to rethink if like if I'm going to be the same way you were like, do you want to be famous? And I'm like, no, I just want to be surrounded by genuine people but also like knowing that I'm gonna have to deal with a larger spectrum of people and have to be able to understand more people from all over the place and you know enforce my own boundaries so that I can do that and feel safe and comfortable when I do it. So having that discussion with myself where I was like, what would I want out of a, out of a friendship and out of a person and out of you know the, the community that I'm trying to build? It was the first time I'd ever really asked myself that I oh guess. Um, okay that, i don't know if it's like a strange thing but like i feel like most of the friends that i've made have been like people who've reached out to me there was like i i, I put a lot of effort into my friendships me too but mm. like yeah exactly exactly it's like i want to again surround myself with people that think similarly and that can support me and do and like i don't need i'm very easily brought down by a lot of toxicity and i know that mm. about myself so like surrounding myself with people who like to like think on the bright side and and they're more aware of their surroundings than i am so like it, i don't think it's a bad thing to consider what every single thing does for you in your life you know what i mean mm, like mm. is this benefiting me overall or is this not and i think people need to do that with relationships as well and like yes there's something to be said for except like being able to accept people fully for who they are um and this was that moment where i had to really think about like what i've never told i've never given people boundaries they could do whatever they want it, like around me as long as you know what i mean as long as they're like it's never like i, I never asked my friends to be any different and i and i love that i can try to accept everything about people but like when creating a community where it's not just making like your six closest friends it's yes like, it's like a huge it's team hard. and you're like huh? yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly so like i genuinely don't like i'm a very small channel and and i currently like it that way um like <laughs> it's 
very nice to meet new people, but I also have to like learn how to interact with a lot of new people, and it's hard for me to do that, you know, quickly. So this has made me really readdress like how I want my space to be, what things make me feel safe and comfortable and happy and supported and fulfilled and successful and whatever. So like is my midlife crisis I guess like deciding like how I want to go forward and deciding that I want to go forward thinking that people are generally speaking working out of like insecurities and fears and that I want to be accepting and uh, give people the space to change if they want to like I don't like making assumptions of like one behavior like I'm often that awkward person that I like I say the wrong thing or I like don't think something out because I was anxious and I was, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Um, I want to give people the space to make mistakes and, and, yes. and have that be okay. You I know? think like, we don't have you're, you're trying to put the energy that you wish is also embodying you, right? Like since you are that, that type of person where you describe yourself as like, I'm a little bit awkward. And so sometimes I'll oh, be X, Y, Z you also allow other people to be awkward in your space and be like okay let's learn exactly. from this yeah and i and i want to encourage that kind of behavior instead Absolutely. of how do you differentiate yeah. empathy versus sympathy for me sympathy implies um a little bit more like i don't want to say pity because that's not exactly the right word and that's not necessarily a bad thing either but i feel like sympathy is more like i feel bad for you but i don't understand and mm. empathy is more like i understand mm -hmm. why you feel bad on a deeper mm. level and can support you in a way that I wouldn't be able to if I didn't understand. And I think that's again about, mm. I like to collect perspectives, like genuinely like, this is gonna sound kind of bad, but like I have met some people who like I genuinely like, rarely, but like genuinely think I'm like, you not even trying to be a good person and you are not ashamed <laughs> of that. And you know what, that is, okay that is how you choose to live your life and i can choose how to live my life and i don't yeah. have to you know but like also wow have we had some interesting conversations they <laughs> no shame they were I like totally, telling mm. me stuff where i'm like you know you're a bad person as you're saying this you were like <laughs> proud of the fact that you did something really horrible to another human being and you're like yeah this is just the way that i live my life and i don't care how they feel or think and i'm like whoa let's talk about that like let I like I want to understand that perspective because like what like not only just like why you think that way because again intent matters but like blatant disregard or not mm. even just disregard for the people's feeling like we talked deeply but not because I think they wanted to get to know me just because they wanted to talk about themselves and that's okay I, I I'm happy they to do wanted that. to hear their voice with you I'm so <laughs> sorry <laughs> but, like not in a it, like in a genuinely like that doesn't bother me For me i'm like oh my god tell me everything i want to understand why you think the way that you do and you're self-aware enough to know these things he's like oh yeah i went through a phase where i just dated really ugly people and i was like really? <laughs> you were ugly? like you're doing this because you're ashamed that you dated people that your friends made fun of or like you genuinely think Wait. they are ugly people and you were like i am like I'm that just seems myself. toxic you know what like, yeah and it's like and he was like oh yeah and i enjoyed telling them like when we broke up that it was because they were ugly and i was like what a <laughs> that is so like i would just never do that but like tell me more what a <laughs> genuinely like that's it's one of those things like another weird like maybe it's a multi-potentiality thing or not but like another one of those like career dream careers was like to be the psychologist that like talks to serial killers like i want to know oh i, I want to talk you through this trauma and the reason you got because i don't think anybody gets to be a genuinely horrible person without experiences for the most part like there are some for most that part that yeah for, yeah for the most part, there are those people who are just born without the ability to give a f That's fine. Exactly. Even if they their conditions are completely, like, well off, like, if you're rich, your family cared for you, you had a family, you know, stuff like that. Like, all of the ca cards were, like, in the right field, but you just turned out like that. It just... Mm -hmm. Some people are like that. It's a, it's a weird anomaly and that definitely then, occurs. Like, I also feel like there's something to be said for, like, how we can only live our own experience. And again, you can ask everybody about their perspectives if they're willing to give you a genuine and honest conversation, which again mm. is something that I value in a friendship. But like, 
you can only experience what you're you can you can compare your situation to other people and be like well they have it's so much worse than me but it's like you have an experience pain is relative like, is yeah right now mm -hmm. and like you can still be depressed and be mm -hmm. in like a situation where everyone else is like you should be fine and still be depressed like i'm like being able to like again it's that competitiveness where it's like we don't need to compare experiences here we can both equally agree that we don't feel great right now without it yeah freaking competition and like. when it comes to it too sometimes it can be competitive but i also see it in this perspective that like just because you can carry it well doesn't mean the burden wasn't heavy exactly that is i love how you phrased that mm. i love how you phrased that like it, it, it makes such a difference like our experiences and like being able to again you know have the empathy to understand or to at least want to try to understand like we can't mm. always get there i won't know truly and fully what it is like to want to hurt somebody in that way to like yeah. give them that thing That's where they're never gonna forget that moment where their partner told them that they were ugly and they always thought that like you're never gonna unhear that that's trauma i'm sorry like even if you're like i, I hate this person and you take it well like sure but you're yeah. never gonna like forget that moment either yeah and i can't see why people would do that to each other intentionally but just I because you can it. just because you can just like you can explain it doesn't mean it justifies the action you feel exactly I'm and, kind but of like, i do huh? know like people who will explain it i guess if that this makes sense crazy. So, like with that being a time capsule what is one thing that you want to say to your future self you know what i i knew that i should have prepared for this question because i know that you ask it i think it would be great to tell myself that it is okay to sit with experience and try to understand and also reassociate a lot of the negativity i have surrounding just being there for myself i spend so much time tearing myself down before anybody else can that i hope god i hope a year from now at the very least i just hope that i can readdress the way i talk to myself and uh how i handle the more difficult sides of life mm. um, i hope that i'm doing better at it than i ever have before a year from now and it's something i intend to work on actively in the meantime and then i hope i've maintained the friendships that matter I'm so, i hate doing this but i think team you have to say goodbye Bye.